Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I made the signature piece for Rhymes Cosplay, her amazing bomber jacket. This took about 30 working hours over the course of two months from start to finish. I used Mood Fabrics Free Avelia Bomber Jacket pattern for this. My normal coat size is an XL or 1416 depending on the brand. Though the size range was inclusive and I printed it to the proper scale measurement, regretfully the pattern runs small. It still worked out in the end though. Next up, it was time to cut out the materials. The black fabric is matte satin from Fabric Wholesale Direct. For the jacket, I cut out two pieces of the back panel, two pieces of the front panel, and both sleeves. I also did cut out pieces for the zipper in the sleeve cuffs, but wound up making several creative changes. The pattern itself calls for stretch knit pieces for the collar, hem, and sleeve cuffs, and because of the complicated design Rhyme has on both the collar and the sleeve, I opted to omit those. For the lining, hem, sleeves, and the collar, you do see me cut out pieces of matte satin, but it didn't have the luster that I wanted. I opted to go for a very difficult metallic foil fabric instead. After that, it was time to create the collar piece. I used a grocery bag for pattern paper and lightly taped together the back and front pieces of the Avalia pattern to get a measurement. I sketched out a design first, but changed my mind midway and started over. I watched Casey Renee's collar video for her Glinda cosplay for some additional tips and support in constructing the collar how I wanted it. Rhyme's collar has ridges every inch and a half or so, and it stands up while the jacket is open. My idea was to sew the collar with a piece of black fabric and a piece of the gold, stitch around the top and sides to leave the bottom open, turn it inside out, and stuff it with crab foam. Because the gold fabric is very fragile, I didn't want to include any kind of wire either, just hopes that this would work.
Now to begin stitching. I sewed both the lining pieces together and then the back panel piece. As mentioned, the gold material is fragile, and my biggest mistake when working with the foil lame fabric is not using interfacing to reinforce it before sewing. I learned this years ago when I first began competing. I know better, but had since forgotten. As a result, many of the edges frayed and had to be re-sewn or fray check and fabric glue applied. If you are going to make Rhymes jacket, load up on interfacing or find a different gold material for sure. I also made sure to press the wrinkles out of the gold lame before stitching everything permanently. Then I laid the lining pieces on top of the black satin pieces and clipped them together. I specifically use clips for this instead of pins since the lame fabric is so fragile. Another mistake that I made is that I sewed the right sides together for the back portion and turned it inside out. When working with a lining, the wrong sides should be sewn together as the seams won't be visible on the outsides and you're depriving yourself of seam allowance when you do this, unless you're sure to add it when cutting your fabric. Then, to make sure that everything was steady, or as steady as it could be, I used my serger to stitch the lining pieces together. After serging is where you can add some fray check or fabric glue to help keep everything neat and tidy and avoid the frayed edges.
Moving on, it was time to measure out the vinyl for the sleeves. I had leftover heat transfer gold vinyl from another project, and off camera, I measured the sleeves and the shoulder seams of the pattern to see how long the pieces needed to be. I left them about one inch wide, but cut short pieces for the shoulder seams and 25 inch pieces for the sleeves. There was a smidge of overlap as well, just to make sure that I didn't cut it too short. I used a razor blade and my sewing ruler to make the measurements in the cut so they were as precise as they could be. I also used the pattern as a reference to see specifically where I needed to place the vinyl by making notches on the pattern and then using my heat erasable pen to make notches on where I wanted the vinyl to lay so that I didn't have to take the full pattern piece over to the ironing board. I want to make sure that the vinyl parts line up exactly. After that, it's time to iron. I increased my iron's temp to the highest, used a pressing cloth, and then placed my cuts of vinyl where I had marked them. The good thing about the heat erasable pen is that the markings disappear once heat is applied. As mentioned before, there was a little bit of overlap for the vinyl in which I cut off the excess and then reinforced again with the iron and the pressing cloth. I also have a Teflon ironing sheet specifically for when I am ironing anything that's adhesive so that the glues aren't transferred to my ironing board cover. Teflon is a non-stick so any glue residue that winds up on it literally wipes right off or scrapes right off. I may or may not have ruined a couple of ironing board covers before I discovered this. <laughs>
Then it's time to peel the clear film off of the vinyl so we can see how well it really shines. This could be tricky depending upon how you pick at the edge, but it came out absolutely perfect. The gold hue in the fabric and the vinyl are a few shades off, but that's just my perfectionism speaking. After that, I then clip the sleeve to the jacket base, being very careful to ensure that the vinyl is lined up as exact as it can be. From here, I will serge the sleeve to the jacket. the bottom seam of the sleeve and the side seam for the jacket I will do all in one single stitch. Because of the sizing on the final product, the inside seams definitely needed some reinforcement. I also realized at this point I hadn't included any pockets which hurt my soul and I had a full list of things I would do differently for whenever I made this jacket again. For the jacket hem, I measured another piece of gold fabric about 6 inches wide and 54 inches long, then sandwiched it around a piece of craft home that was just a little bit short of that measurement, and clipped it together. I got this method from the hip rolls that I make for my Sailor Scout cosplays.
Then after a break, I took a piece of gold fabric that I wanted to serve as a sleeve cuff, clipped it to the edge of the sleeve, and then ran it through the serger so they would have a nice finish. I intended to loop a piece of elastic through it to tighten it up some, which took place off camera. The coat hem I ran through the serger to clean up the raw edges and then took my ruler to mark every one and five eighths of an inch across it. I don't know how I came up with the measurement, but it looked good when I eyeballed it. This is where I would sew a seam to give the hem those square looking ridges that Rhyme has. This was super tedious and took a lot of time, but again, my goal for this cosplay was to be as accurate as I could to her appearance in the game. Just take your time and go slowly.
Now it's time to sew the side seam and the sleeves together to fully form the jacket. This method of finishing a garment is my favorite just for the ease of application. It seems like we are really getting somewhere now. All that's left is the sleeves, collar, hem, and zipper. Speaking of the collar, I use the same method for this as I did the coat hem. However, the markings needed to be adjusted a little bit since there are more angles than the straight up and down lines that the coat hem has. I started out with the 1 and 5 eighths markings and spacing them either further or narrower as needed. Once done, the raw edge of the collar I sewed to the jacket and covered that stitch with some bias tape and off camera I added the zipper. All in all, the jacket was daunting, but it came out great. Plus, I took every mistake that I made this time around and remade the jacket for an even better version with pockets. Stay tuned for that video later this summer. <laughs> 